Many title closers have questions about how to set up the closing statement and what transactional expenses are permitted to be shown on the closing statement. First, let's talk about the relinquished property that a taxpayer is selling. Remember that all of the equity, all of the net proceeds needs to be moved into that replacement property. So we don't want to clutter up the closing statement with a bunch of transactional expenses that should really be paid out of the seller's own pocket, such as rent prorations, security deposits, taxes, and things that the seller would normally pay out of their own operating account. To the extent that we can pay those out of closing and have the seller come in with their own out-of-pocket funds for those transactional expenses, the better we're going to be. Moving forward to the replacement property, again, there are certain expenses that should not be paid for out of the 1031 exchange account. Unusual expenses for insurance, for example, or even costs of the new loan, such as loan origination fees, rate lock fees, and underwriting fees that the lender charges. In an ideal world, those transactional expenses would be paid for out of closing by the seller, or in this case, the buyer.